Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Now, you might wonder, what does true crime know about art? And certainly, what does true crime know about Vincent van Gogh? And also, what does van Gogh have to do with true crime? If you're not sure of any of those questions, you can go and watch the beautiful animated movie. You can It's actually free, I think, on Vimeo. I'll put a link to that in the description and see exactly why. It is a true crime story. It is something that has been investigated of late by a lot of experts. In terms of my expertise, in terms of the subject matter, well, I've written a book, The Murder of Vincent van Gogh. It's got a pretty high average review. I think it's four and a half out of five stars. Also, I come from a background of artists. My brother's a full-time artist. My uh, great-grandfather is a master landscaper, very well-known, almost a household name in my country. I also have an aunt who's an artist and an author. And then finally, about three years ago, I actually traveled to Orvez was to investigate some of the ideas, to take photos, to test some of the theories I had in the Vincent van Gogh case. So I have actually been to where he spent the last 70 days of his life and also to the very setting, the very garden of the house where he painted the famous portrait of Dr. Gachet. In this episode, we're going to examine this idea that one of those portraits, because there were two, one of them is fake. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So Vincent's brother Theo inherited the portrait of Dr. Gachet, this one, in 1890. A few months later, Theo died and the painting passed to his widow, Joe. Joe sold the portrait of Dr. Gachet seven years later for about 300 francs. That's around $3,200. Almost a century later, in May 1990, Christie's in New York put the painting up for auction. It was bought for a world record $82.5 million, the most expensive painting in the world at the time. Where is it right now? Where is the portrait of Dr. Gachet, as I say, a one-time world record, the most expensive artwork in the world? Where is that painting right now? No one knows. You still think Van Gogh is not a true crime story? Is there a second version of the portrait of Dr. Gachet? Yes, this one. Where is that right now? Well, it is held at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, France. The second portrait of Dr. Gachet was owned by Dr. Gachet himself. Gachet's heirs bequeathed, sold maybe, uh, the portrait to the French government in the 1950s. Around the same time the book Lust for Life and the movie based on the book starring Kirk Douglas came out. I think I need to be a bit more specific about that. It was sold after uh, Vincent van Gogh became kind of famous, right? So it was sold after the book was published and also after the movie came out, but basically in the 1950s. Prior to that, the junior Gachet had protected the Gachet art archive with a peculiar paranoia. It was very secretive about this. And this is not just speculation or rumor or someone's opinion. According to the New York Times, this is a 1999 article titled Comparing the Fake and the Great. This is a quote from that article. Quote, the questions arose because of the behavior of the son, Paul Gachet Jr., a recluse who spent his life tending his father's legacy with pathological and paranoid zeal. He preserved everything in the family house as if it were a shrine. Only rarely did he let visitors see the collection, preventing photographs of it. Its contents didn't become known until the 1950s, when, having discreetly sold off parts of the collection, Paul, that's Paul Gachet Jr., that is the son of the guy, portrait of Dr. Gachet, it's the son of that man who, who sat for the portrait, uh, he bequeathed what remained of this collection of Van Gogh art to France. People inevitably asked what, if anything, he had been hiding all those years. 
the present exhibition is considerably absorbed by these questions. And so when you eventually had these exhibitions from of this sort of secret trove of Van Gogh art, people were like, a little bit suspicious of it. People were wondering, where did this come from? What is going on? And so the same museum also owns many other works by the figure that is the focus of the portrait, Dr. Gachet. There are real reasons to suggest at least one of these two of Van Gogh's most expensive and valuable artworks isn't genuine. Which one do you think isn't genuine? Now, in true crime, we often deal with lie detecting, micro expressions, small little details that show that someone isn't uh, telling the truth, that someone isn't who they present, isn't who they pretending to be. Um, small uh, things that show that deception is indicated, right? Like, for, for example, from a polygraph test. Well, are you able to turn that high powered precision thinking? on kind of a painting and say do you can you see the, the subtleties can you see the differences can you see whether the one is by a different artist can you see whether what is in front of you is the real thing or fake so this is my analysis of the portrait of dr gachet and we're going to begin by taking a macro view so broadly speaking the image on the left has numerous additions compared to the image on the right. In a very basic way, one can say that the image on the right derives itself from the image on the left. You can definitely see that the image on the left is the first version, the earlier version, also the original version. The image on the right adds nothing, but instead subtracts several elements. So in a very real sense, the image on the right, the second version, is inferior. It's lesser. Do you agree with that? In 1928, a Dutch scholar who compiled the first catalogue of Van Gogh's work described the second version as, quote, a weak replica, end quote. Not just a replica, but a weak replica. So did Van Gogh suddenly have a just sort of a, a bad moment, kind of like painter's block? We can see this weakness, the weakness in the skill of the artist through, for example, the complete absence of of energy lines in the background, specifically in the sort of sky area, um, but the sort of horizon and sky of the fake portrait, the, the blue. We can see that through the almost complete absence of energy lines in the background, as well as the idiotic line through the blue substrate, which is technically similar to the original while being conceptually redundant. Why would you have a blue background with a line going through it? What's going on there? Also, the triangular light blue sliver between the table and the doctor's jacket is so out of kilter with any of the background clothing that once seen, it can't be unseen. And now we go to the micro view. What are the main differences between the two versions? Well, the first version has green buttons. The other does not. The first version has a pair of yellow books recalling his other work featuring books. The detail in the foxgloves is far more intricate and delicate than the chalky effort of the second version. Also, the glass is missing in the second version. Interestingly, the orange table in the second version has a small triangle added above the elbow. This appears to be the sole license the second version adds to the first. It also clarifies that the table is in fact straight, and not circular as the first version implies or suggests. In reality, and I've actually seen this table in practice, I've seen it in the Garden of Dr. Gachet, sort of behind the house, it is actually an orange table and it is straight. Additionally, the ear in the second version is an awful mess. It, look, it looks like a volcano. The hair and the cap of the first version are like the foxgloves, more delicately and sensitively portrayed. And now we deal with a third dimension, an intuitive impression. Perhaps the biggest difference between the two portraits is in the face, and particularly the eyes of Dr. Gachet. The green used in the original portrait 
is a similar device used to denote envy that Van Gogh used in some of his own self-portraits, especially those featuring the mutilated ear. Van Gogh's portrait of Paul Gauguin is almost entirely green and fraught with sickening and pointed resentments. In Van Gogh's letters, nowhere does he reference a second version of the portrait of Dr. Gachet. This is something I've been emphasizing in my series uh, on Van Gogh, uh, just saying, you know, this is actually one of the most prominent people, probably by far the most prominent person that had ever sat for his portrait. This guy knew other artists like Monet, Pissarro, Renoir, and so on. And so he was a, a very well-connected guy, but he's also a doctor. And so he's a very prominent person. So it would have been very flattering if he'd asked to have a second portrait painted, one that he could keep. And yet it's never mentioned in the letters between Theo and Vincent. And bear in mind, they wrote to each other all the time. In fact, around the time that the the second portrait was supposed to have been painted, we know details about Van Gogh going to the station to meet his nephew, taking a bird's nest there kind of as a gift, chasing ducks around in the garden. We know the names of the animal, some of the animals in the in the in the garden of Dr. Gachet, such as a goat called Henriette. And so you have all of this detail, but nothing mentioned in any letters about the second portrait of Dr. Gachet. And also around that same time, he painted the Church of Orvez, and he goes into so much detail about the clouds or the sky in the Church of, at Orvez. And that is a really good example of what it should look like, the, the roiling blue. That is what the blue should look like if, in the absence of those energy lines um, in the second portrait. And yet, instead, you kind of get a weird patchwork, a sort of horizontal and vertical lines crossing over each other, which Van Gogh never did that. So something is going wrong in that particular portrait. Of course, Van Gogh did mention the first version to his brother and sister, and in that he mentions the yellow novels and actually identifies the flowers in both letters to his, his siblings as foxglove flowers. So there's a lot of detail in what he communicates, so why would he not just communicate, well, Dr. Gachet asked me to do the second portrait, and this is the reason why I didn't put this in or why I changed that. If you think the criticism of the authenticity of the second version of the portrait is special pleading, well, there's a tradition of fakery surrounding uh, Van Gogh's art. According to an article in The Guardian, quote, the authenticity of many of Van Gogh's works is still in doubt. In 1996, experts questioned the attribution of up to 100 of the 870 oil paintings, and that is well over 10% that make up the official Van Gogh canon. End quote. In sum, there is plenty to reinforce the notion that the second version is fake. And here's a, another interesting question. Could the first version be fake as well? Bear in mind, this is the most valuable painting Van Gogh ever painted. Could that actually be fake as well? According to Wikipedia, quote, the Reich Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, this is obviously in Germany during the Second World War, confiscated the work, that is the portrait of Dr. Gachet, the original, in 1937 as part of its campaign to rid Germany of so-called degenerate art. Hermann Hermann Göring, through his agent Sepp Agerer, sold it to Franz Koenigs in Paris, together with the quarry of Bilbermus by Cezanne and Dubigny's garden, which is also painted in Auvers Souars, by Van Gogh. So two artworks have been sort of confiscated by the Reich Ministry of Public Enlightenment. Two are Van Gogh's, one is a Cezanne. And in August 1939, Koenigs transported the paintings from Paris while, you know, the Second World War was um, just about to sort of break out and really, you know, go up a gear. And so he transported these paintings to New York to the Noodler Gallery, which is the subject of 
the art fraud podcast that Alec Baldwin has been involved in. And from there, the work was often lent to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. According to Wikipedia, again, Gnudler and Co. was an art dealership in New York City founded in 1846. When it closed in 2011 amid lawsuits for fraud, it was one of the oldest commercial art galleries in America, having been in operation for 165 years. It was later discovered that between 1994 and 2011, under Friedman's direction, the gallery had sold almost 40 faked paintings. Friedman had purchased a painting for Noodler from uh, Glafira Rosales, who had in turn obtained the fake paintings from the art forger Pei Shen Quinn. Quinn had reportedly painted the forgeries in a garage in Queens, New York. Queen was able to imitate the styles of the masters and give the paintings an illusion of age by using tea or dirt from a vacuum cleaner, dirting their appearance. He is reported to have received less than $9,000 for each painting from Rosales, while Rosales sold the paintings for millions of dollars to Noodler. End quote. In my opinion, the first version of the Portrait of Dr. Gachet isn't fake. But since no one knows where it is, its authenticity can't be forensically tested in order to verify this. Also, because the first version is missing, the two portraits can't be placed side by side to do a more definitive comparison. If you found this analysis interesting, you might want to go through some of the episodes so far in the Van Gogh series. We're already at episode 5. I'll also put links to some ABC News coverage from about 6 or 7 years ago dealing with this art forger that I've spoken about. Uh, And then also another video from Vice News dealing with the weird world of art forgery. If you're interested in finding out more about my research into the murder of Vince Van Gogh, I'll put a link to my book in the description And you can go and check that out. It's available on Kindle and as a paperback. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.